Welcome to the space where creators have aligned a positive and intellectual collab of open minds. For sharing and learning from one another, it's a vibe. We give us a podcast on the mic. Subscribe, educators, spitting bars. I guess you didn't know, I'm multifaceted and humble, taking off life goals. The classroom is my comfort zone, where I plant and sow. Seeds of knowledge, compassion, empathy, and hope. Reading is the key to unlocking your potential. Countless benefits, including positive and mental. Regardless of the genre, books are highly influential. Go get yours, I'll get mine. Make you strive. Money mental. Come rock with me and get down to this new jam. Yeah. Yeah. With my friends, I had a very simple plan. Educate the masses through books and life lessons. It's a grand slam. I'm out. Sala for lover and welcome to the Reads of Russell podcast. Fam, I am so excited to introduce today's guest. She is an entrepreneur, an advocate, a community role model, and leader. You probably know her as one of the hosts of Blue Wave TV's The Pacific Morning Show, a podcast that aims to generate conversation around topics and issues that affect Pacifica people. It's an honor to welcome to the show, Hannah Schmidt. <laughs> How are you, sis? That is, I'm um, sorry, that introduction i hope it doesn't get to my head but thank you so much for beautiful introduction and thank you so much for having me on i'm fangirling over your show because i'm constantly seeing your content on twitter and i'm like retweeting and i'm like this is so important this is so important everyone watch i yeah i mean i you already know i said this off camera fangirl over here i've been i mean it's not recent but for a long time now i've seen you on Twitter, seeing what you're doing with Blue Wave, uh, seeing what your company is doing, and just loving the content that you guys are putting out. Uplifting, uh, valuable, important content. Uh, we'll get more into that uh, throughout the podcast. But I guess before we begin, uh, just a brief intro, maybe shout out your villages. Oh, uh, here we go. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, thank you so much, um, Rosa, for having me on the show, first and foremost. Um, I really appreciate um, your hard work to get this content out there to our people. But um, what's up, everyone? My name's Hannah. I think Rosa has, has said most of it. Um, I'm the host for the Pacific Good Morning Show. I also work uh, with Blue Wave, our awesome team at Blue Wave, which is a bus speaker-owned digital media solutions company. Um, and basically, I'm in media. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm doing a lot of different things and projects that I love. And um, I'm the kind of person who gets very bored easily. So I can't be stapled down at like, you know, um, one thing for too long of a time because I'll just get bored. So um, the entrepreneurial journey is kind of like my thing. I really enjoy it. Um, it doesn't feel like work most times. And I love the people I'm surrounded by. But yeah, that's me. I'm really excited to be on this. And I just wanted to do a massive shout out to um, my Blue Wave team, uh, also my family. Um, thank you so much for all your support and for providing me the opportunity and platforms to get to where we are now. There's a lot of work to be done, but I'm so thankful for that. Um, and my villages. So um, uh, mom and dad, I was born and raised here in New Zealand in South Auckland and Mangele. Uh, my parents moved here in 1994, the year I was born. And my parents are from Falatai, Safotu, and Baisala, and Almato. <laughs> oh, give it up, fam! If you're if you are listening or watching, well, there you go. Your cousin's on the show. <laughs> just, just saying. <laughs> Thank you, sis, for the introduction. You know, I was thinking, I was wondering about your entrepreneurial um, journey. Like, where did that start for you? Uh, what yeah. I mean is, was it in high school? Like, what what got you interested in that? Yeah, that's so funny because I, as far back as I can remember, probably when I was like 14, when I started thinking work and what do I want to do, um, I was in high school and I I never pictured myself being like in corporate or like being at the top of a tower with my own office and stuff like that. It was never kind of like, my dream was to be in corporate, but I always like um, had a passion about running something. Um, the first thing I wanted to run was a, a small cafe, it was like a restaurant because I love hospitality. Um, my family have a host, I have a background in hospitality, um, so it was something. So I knew that I never wanted to like kind of 
um, be a top corporate position, but I did want to like build things. I like to build things and create things. Um, so it started when I was like 14. Um, I'm not in the hospitality industry right now, um, but I do want to get there someday. Like hopefully I can have a cafe or a restaurant or a hotel one day, but we'll work towards that. Um, I found myself more in the digital media space, the e-commerce space and uh, sales and marketing um, at this stage in my life. Um, and then I, I started, I first started my entrepreneurial journey with Amazon. So that was um, drop shipping and, uh, e-commerce and finding products, product research and in different countries and what their consumers are buying. And so I started there and it was really good because I got to understand the different types of models businesses use, especially a giant such as Amazon who is dominating in America for sales, um, uh, for everyday items and different types of items, even with books and things like that. So um, through Amazon, I was able to understand that business is constantly evolving. There's no right way. There are so many different ways to, um, to deal in business. And um, it's fast paced and you have to, constantly be keeping up so that's what mm. i learned through through amazon through dealing through amazon and then through amazon um i understand amazon is this huge giant i didn't want to be um selling under amazon for a long time i knew um with my type of personality i wanted to create so i started um getting into other projects that i'm interested in which is like uh filming podcasting i've started my first podcast on my iphone which was <laughs> a political I don't know if you've heard of it and I hope you haven't, <laughs> but like, um, I knew that I loved podcasting. Um, there were so many different people I was listening to at the time. I was listening to, um, American content, Australian content, um, different psychologists, uh, different philosophers. And I realized, holy crap, like podcasts are so useful when you're on the go, you can just chuck it on. Um, and it's, it's more um, interesting because it's away from traditional media, which we know to be constantly divisive because mm. that's how to profit. But with podcasting, you've got alternative media, which is uh, more free think, um, more space to give you know opinions outside of what people think is the norm because it's being right. presented. Um, and exploring different people's ideas and opinions and different ways they would tackle con um, issues that the world is currently facing. <clears throat> so mm. first, I, I really loved uh, podcasts. And then I decided to create one and I wanted to create a political one. And so earlier on, this was like three, four years ago, I started a podcast and it was called The Hannah Schmidt Show. I knew nothing about podcasting. I mean, I knew nothing about creating a podcast. I knew I loved listening to podcasts, but I was like, okay, you know what? Let's just roll with it. And basically I just um, interviewed, the purpose of the podcast was to help bus speaker people start conversations about politics and how it directly affects us. So my intention was not to like, you know, get people to like um, see me as the person who's right on politics all the time. My intention was have the conversation like it's um, it's okay to, to say if you're of an opposing party that majority of bus speaker people would vote for. It's okay to express those opinions and just providing a space where people can see that those conversations can be normalized in our families, amongst our friends, in our communities. And I'm not saying that we don't have them. I just, I'm saying that we need to have them more. So um, I started with that podcast and then it was all filmed on my phone. Um, my, <laughs> <laughs> my a lot. I'm, um, I was trying to, and then I just realized how hard it was um, filming, editing, coming up with the content. I realized that um, it can't be a one man thing. You need an entire team. It can be, I'm telling you, it can be <laughs> very difficult. And I give it up to people who are running podcasts by themselves. Um, right now I'm blessed to be at a stage uh, with my family. Uh, we have Blue TV, we have filmers, we have editors, uh, we have people we can run ideas by. Um, we have people who help us research um, different pieces that the Pacific are interested in. Um, and we also have a huge team with just different skills 
who can add value to what we're creating and the space that we're trying to create really. So, um, yeah, sorry, jumping everywhere. So I started off at 14. I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. And then I started with Amazon, which gave me a good insight on how business works uh, generally in different ways, how fast paced it was. And then I wanted to get into podcasting. Now I'm with Blue TV and I'm um, lead for content development for, for Blue TV. But that really just means I organize everything and then I just make sure everything works. <laughs> <laughs> That's an important job. Very yeah. important. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm really passionate now about um, content. Mm. Um, and about different products that can help people um, for self-development using their anganu'u and culture as a strength pillar. So those are the things I'm I'm really passionate about. So when I'm networking or I'm in different spaces and someone's like, hey, I'm doing this and the reason is because I want bus speaker people to be healthier or to be more financially liter um, literate, I'm always a huge supporter behind that. And... Um, yeah, so that's kind of like my messy entrepreneurial journey. But I am working on a lot of uh, different things and I can't wait to release a lot of them. Uh, I can't talk about it right now, but all of them generally just align with my purpose. And my purpose is the uplifting of bus speaker communities. So mm. whatever aligns with that, I'm happy to to work alongside or help where I can. But if it doesn't align with that that purpose, I'm more reluctant to be get uh, to get engaged in and those kind of things. Oh, oh I love 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 to hear it. <laughs> love to see it. Seriously, um, we need more of that in our communities. Um, just uplifting, uh, positive. I mean, you know, positive content is always good, um, but also challenging content. Yeah, you yeah. know that challenges our you know, societal norms and the fact that we're meant to, like you mentioned, we're meant to think a certain way, we're meant to support a certain political party for historical reasons. I mean, there's, it's a very complex mm -hmm. uh, conversation. You know, I was wondering, how did you end up at Blue Wave? Like this whole journey, but now you're at Blue Wave Ngalumuana Limited. What was that first step into that space? Right. Because you're one of the directors. Sorry, yeah. let me just throw that in there. <laughs> yeah, so what happened was um, Blue Wave is actually owned by my family. So mm. it's owned by, it was started um, by my uncle. His name is uh, Martin Anai. Hi, Martin, if you're watching this. <laughs> um, he, had, he is a very, very hardworking man. Um, and he was born and raised in Samoa. And he loved surfing this is the story of blue wave so blue wave started off as a beach shack in samoa that mm. helped fix surfboards in samoa back in like 2000 and i think like 11 2008 2009 towards that time um and basically all of the international surfers will come to uh the certain uh beach spot in samoa and then their boards would get wrecked and beach and blue wave at that time was focused on um, fixing those boards. So that was the business at the start. Um, however, um, Martin, our CEO and founder, decided to move overseas to expand. And he, he managed to get a job within that time. Like entrepreneurial, um, entrepreneurs are very complex with how they work. So at the time, Martin was, worth, was working for the UN and, and realized his love for digital media. But he realized that our stories weren't being told by our own people. It was actually being told by big, huge organizations um, who are predominantly Balangi. Um, so Martin moved overseas here to New Zealand. Um, and in 2016, he formed Blue Wave. And he basically had to scale fish and work a rubbish truck for a few years to save up for his first Mac and his first camera. So um, it's that, it's that, type of entrepreneurship where it's like working hard to save for the equipment and the equipment and digital media is very it's very expensive like a camera is like three thousand mm. three thousand dollars so um he worked really hard to build the business and i basically joined blue wave um in 2020 mm -hmm. like um during 
just after the first lockdown. It was shortly after the first lockdown. And um, Martin had a team at that time. I think there was a team of uh, four people at the time. Now we've expanded to 15 in Ooh. that short amount of time. And we have an office in Samoa as well. So um, basically, Martin and also my other cousin, uh, Rosary, hi, Rosary, um, they just approached me and they were like, Hana, we know, um, you know, we'd love you to be part of our team. Um, we know the value that you could offer. And um, I basically just joined because my cousin and my uncle asked me to join. I love that. Um, we all had like very similar interests in media. Um, we bring different skills and strengths to the table and... Um, we had an entire meeting, a director's meeting to really flesh out what our purpose was and what we wanted to do in the space. Mm -hmm. And we dialed really well together. And um, this this year was our first year. Um, Blue Wave was previously in a shared office space um, at the Pacific Business Hub in Manukau, but in 2022, we got our first office. So we've mm -hmm. been in our first office space for one year. We've opened office space in Samoa for for Pacific Media News and we're just hoping to expand that um yeah and see but that's how I we're sorry it's a bit of a long story but no um, I love it I, I mean it needs to be told and and these are the stories that we don't hear I mean I did research and I did read about it, but it's just different to actually hear someone actually telling the story. It's like okay okay that makes yeah. so much sense. You know I when COVID happened I, I think like 2020, I could not travel home. But what I was following on Instagram was the Pacific Business Hub. Like I was, I was just like, oh, you know, because they were promoting small businesses at the time, you know, during such a difficult financial uh, time for a yeah. lot of our people. And then I was buzzing out because then in 2021, I came home in June, June, July. And then Lani had to go to the Pacific Business Hub for, I think he was doing an interview on um, one of the shows. And I honestly was walking through like, oh, this is, I was like taking photos. This is the place on Instagram, you know, because you follow and you right. see the work that is being done. But then actually walking through the offices was like, oh, these guys are the real deal. Like it was such a nice space to see. Mm -hmm. Here are our people, um, doing things to uplift our own people. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. For the people, by our own people. It was really cool. So that was, that was really, that was my experience with the business hub. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And then later started seeing Blue Wave and what, you know, you guys were doing the shift and everything. I was like, oh, the expansion is happening. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. anything is possible. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and the Pacific Business Hub is a great space for any Pacific businesses who are wanting to grow, but you're mm. at the beginning stage where you have a great idea and you need help and you need support. Pacific Business Hub is great. They're based in um, Lambi Drive now in Manukau, and um, we we started from there as well. Blue Wave started from there with uh, their small team of four. And now, um, you know, due to space reasons, we had to expand. But I, I definitely agree with you. Um, it's a great space. The people in there were awesome. They were all passionate about what mm. they were doing. And it was great to be, like, alongside other Bastrika people just hustling. You know, Blue Wave TV. So there's the Tote Yae, um, Tote Yae podcast. Uh, again, fam, owned by Pacific people <laughs> for Pacific people. Tell us a little bit um, about this podcast because we've also got the morning show, which we'll talk about soon. Sure. So um, Tate Ae podcast was started um, by our owner and founder, Martin Anai. Um, and basically that show was created to provide a different type of media a style of media mm -hmm. which was podcasting you know having a host on the show um talking about the affairs in Samoa like a lot mm -hmm. of the we saw what happened with the elections and it was um making sure that the diaspora um had some sort of uh link to understand mm -hmm. what was happening back home in Samoa and our purpose of that podcast was to ensure that um it was properly being translated to the Sam Samoan diaspora um we're interviewing ministers um very successful Samoan 
uh, business owners, um, public servants um, who come on the show and share a, a lot of the things that are happening in Samoa at the moment and what the what we need to work on. Um, that show also covers um, a lot of the issues that Samoan diaspora face, whether it be um, getting into work. We offer solutions, um, workshops they can join. Um, such as trying to get into first home ownership and also learning your anga nu'u. Um, those, all those things are involved in Tautaya'e and that show has really grown um, from when we first started. It actually started as a sports show. So um, <laughs> the, the beauty of entrepreneurship, the reason why I say entrepreneurship is, is for very, it's not for everyone, is because the amount of tries and retries that, uh, that happen um, being an entrepreneur is crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, um, Tautaya, it has really transformed. Um, it started off as a sports show and then it went to a current events show. And now we've kind of like figured out what it is. And it's grown to a point where we're reaching 8 million people across all our platforms. Uh, YouTube um, and Facebook as well. There's so much engagement from Samoans. Um, people have grown a relationship with our main host who is um asiata um they love his charisma his character like that so it, it's been it's been like really good to see it grow from where it was and our definitely our relationships with the team have become stronger mm -hmm. and um yeah so what we want to do is like build more shows so Tautaya'e um was definitely our first um our i would call it like our starter pack that we've really built in um try to uh, focus on to grow and it's working so it's it's working for us so we're going to keep, keep doing that and heading in that direction that's awesome you know part of that show uh when the auckland mayoral candidate um when the auckland mayoral race was happening so you did a candidate um series speaking with the candidates who are running for mayor um what was that like i mean did you know most of the candidates or was it really a lot of research and planning yeah. went into that. And I have another question, but I'll wait till you finish answering this question. <laughs> um, yes, I did that candidate show because I'm really passionate about uh, politics. Mm -hmm. um, I'm right now at a stage, I'm politically homeless, so I don't affiliate with any political party um, in New Zealand. Um, and I don't consider myself, I, I couldn't put myself on the political scale, like the centre right or whatever. But um, with uh, that segment, I didn't know any of the, the people that were actually running. I think the only person I knew was FSO, mm -hmm. um, through networking. But I literally just emailed their teams. I was like, hi, I'm running a show. Um, the, my intention is to uh, present what you have to offer to Auckland City, to the many Samoans watching right now. Um, my Samoan, I, there's a lot of work I need to work on with my language, which is one of my goals this year is to like get better with my Fat Samoa. But it was basically to ask the mayor's questions I knew our audience would want to know. Because, you know, they, they'll, they'll see these people on like the morning show, the breakfast show, yeah. on these platforms but they're like what does that have to do with me mm. so really peeling back those those layers like what will you do for pacific people if you become mayor what's the first thing you're going to do um if you if you win office and you i got to really see the different personalities <laughs> of these people and where their interests were and what they were focused on and it was really just trying to tie in how um how the running candidates would serve Samoan people and mm. there was a common theme that where a lot of them were like oh it's, it's not only about Samoan it's not about the Pacific it's about you know what's good for all of Auckland but my purpose was how culturally literate or how in tune are you with the, with the Samoan communities because the watchers mm. can be like oh this guy never worked with him or this guy doesn't yeah. know South Auckland or this guy doesn't know Samoans, um, why should I vote for him? So that's what I was trying to peel back um, mm. get to what, you know, um, you'll see on, what's that show? News Talk ZB, how they're <laughs> out. All the things. I was just trying to provide a space mm. where Samoans can understand this is the type of person 
you're going to be voting for because mm. we understand people in a very different way and um, trust is very hard to build. So that's what I was hoping to at that show. But it was good. Yeah, I, just, I literally just reached out to them via email and then they just got back to me. Um, a lot of the Palangia ones were very happy because they felt like they weren't being approached by Pacific no. Media. Um, they felt... Uh, Pacific media didn't want to engage with them. And so I was like, okay, I don't want to be that media. And I feel mm. like I trust our people enough to make their own choices. So why would we hold back the choices that they have? You know, just present the choice and leave them to make their decision. Don't try and feel boss over what should be presented to them or not. So that's, I'm really big on that as well. Mm. You know, knowing that you did the series, um, and we're able to engage, you know, Pacifica audiences. But then we hear that the turnout at the polls is not as we would have liked. Does mm -hmm. that make you want to go into politics yourself? Like, does that kind of thing kind of like, how, how, what was your reaction to that as, uh, as a young folk, as a young person? Yeah. Um, as a young person, I, I wasn't surprised by mm. the voter turnout for Bus Week. It's been like that for such a long time. Mm. And I know it did not make me want to go into politics, I'll say that. Um, <laughs> but it did make me understand that there is a lot of work that needs to be done. And it's not work from an MP point of view. It's not work from a from a public service type of mm. um it's work from 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 the ground really it's trying to make people understand why it's important it's the basics it's really peeling back it's trying to make pacific communities understand the importance of buying your first home of generational wealth and the and you know through making our podcast we understood that um, the lowest um, home ownership rate in New Zealand are bus speaker communities. So we have a really low home ownership rate. And owning a home directly is directly related to um, council decisions because that's how they make their money um, are through homeowners and also commercial owners. So to me, it wasn't mostly focusing on how do we get them to the voting booth. I peeled that way back and I was like, okay, how can we get them into owning more homes? How can mm. we get to becoming more financially stable? How can we get them to becoming more educated? Those were the things that mattered to me more than meeting a number for the for the voting, um, for bus speaker votes. And that's a lot of work. That doesn't happen overnight, mm. even in two to five years. That's over decades and decades of teaching, of making sure the content is accessible um, to our youth who will be adults in the next 10 years. So what platforms are they on? They're on TikTok, they're on Instagram, and making sure that we can really um, make them understand what is the process of owning a home and what does that look like? But in a situation where it's just us talking like we would um, in a garage setting or with our siblings and really breaking that language down so it's understood properly. Mm. Are there programs out there, um, from your perspective, uh, I guess reflecting on what's going on in your own community, are there programs related to financial literacy and just the importance of that um, knowledge and education? Yeah, there are a few um, that I can think of at the top of my head. I do know schools mm -hmm. are incorporating it into their uh, to the curricula. Um, in seventh form where they have an option to take a workshop that teaches mm. you about businesses and those kind of things. But um, as much as those workshops exist, those workshops exist on funding. Uh, so the right. question comes, would those people still be doing the work if there was no funding? If they didn't receive the money to make that happen? So we need to get to a stage where um, people are making um, information, content, workshops for our people because it's one, it's um, profitable and the people who are hosting these workshops benefit from it and also in return it benefits our own people instead of just relying on government to offer us resources because if they didn't give us those resources it wouldn't happen. Mm -hmm. But um, it's just, for me, it's just making sure that we have um, sustainable ways to grow um, 
pathways in which people can teach instead of just relying on funding and um, and ensuring that it's accessible, really. That's me. So um, let's talk about the Pacific Morning Show. It was launched in August this year. Tell us about your team, your wonderful team that are putting these amazing, uh, just uh, quality, good <laughs> content out there to really engage yeah. Uh, yeah. Pacific uh, folks. Mm. Um, our Pacific Morning Show started in, yep, in August. Um, we used to be doing it three three days a week. But now we're on one day a week, but we're constantly pumping up content throughout the week. Mm -hmm. um, and our team, our hosts right now is Ryan and also Bear. Um, we have a great team. I am so thankful for our hosts. And what I like about um, the hosts on the morning show is we're actually quite diverse. Mm -hmm. um, we're all islanders. Ryan is New Wayne, some are Bear Samoan, but she's from an older generation. Um, whereas me and Ryan, we're both like 26, 27. So we're from like a younger generation. And I, I didn't want to make this like a youth show. Mm. Make it like how um, I wanted to show people how we could um, talk to people outside of our ages. And so our guests, they're not just youth, they're like, old people they're young people they're people with different and in different industries and experiences and um what i was hoping to do with it was just give people an, an example of what it would look like on how to safely tell a nor with each other mm -hmm. when it comes to um certain topics especially like mental health mm -hmm. issues and how to be respectful in politics um ryan our other host he's quite um on the political scale he sits like probably on far left or like the center left. I'm more on the um, like center right, I would say, but these are just like terms to like kind of make people understand, but I still am politically homeless guys. <laughs> 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 and um, Bea, born and raised in Manurua, she has a wealth of experience, a wealth of experience with our people um, and not from like a certain, like she's been, she has so much value to add um, as to how our people engage and understand with different um, with different things um, that mm -hmm. we have society. And I feel like she just adds so much value to our conversations because, you know, the there's the academic talk. It doesn't matter how many facts we bring or how many readings we put to the table. The lived experiences matter. And I feel like um, although we do have um, collectively, all three of us, um, really valid lived experiences, we're all born and raised in Mangile. Um, me and Ryan, we literally went through the state housing system um, growing up. He went to Aurere College. He ended up being the head boy of Aurere College. Um, I went to Southern Cross and then I went to only hung a high school after that. So um, we're really really in tune with Pacific communities in Southside and the, the, the singular experiences that matter and mm. that a lot of people can relate to. Um, and I think that's what makes our team awesome, but it's our, our show is the purpose is to elevate um, Pacific communities through Talanoa. And that's about bringing up topics that can be quite controversial or hard to talk about and trying not to normalize them, but trying to, tell people that it is safe, you know, to, to bring up those things with the right people and um, educate through example. Um, mm. I'm huge on not telling people what to do, but I'm huge on showing this is how you can do something or using examples. And um, I'm a huge um, person of faith um, and Christ. Um, I'm a Christian. Christ taught best with parables. So he never mm. told everyone, this is what you should, he did like tell people what direction, but the way he taught people was through example and was through experiences. And I am, that's my thing. Like I love showing people how they can do something through someone else who has done it or mm. that it's possible through an example or an experience, which is, um, yeah, which is what the Pacific morning show is. It's, literally sharing those experiences with um, the audiences. And I'm really happy with how it grew really fast. Um, 
we got well closing up to nearly twenty thousand followers on TikTok, um, and the engagement is crazy. I love seeing people's um, sharing their experiences. Like last week, we posted up uh, a TikTok about home ownership um, with Aurora Capital, and heaps of people were like, "So they all forgot about you know <laughs> 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 about all of that stuff." And this is what I mean about the experiences. It doesn't matter how many times a palangi can come on the show and say, you can own this, you can own this, mm. starting to pick up on the real problems. It's the mismanagement of money. It's the lack of oh. communication between ourselves and our parents. It's the it's hitting boundaries. It's having the honest conversation. Mom, can I please just save $50 this week? Mm. I need this $50 just to put aside when something happens on a rainy day. And those were the problems I'm looking for. Because mm. find those and identify those problems, then we can start offering solutions. But it doesn't matter how many academics, how many you know Pacific think tanks we have. It's about the problems we face at home that matter, and providing solutions for those problems. And um, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. It's it it does not feel like work at all. Mm. When we're shows with my team, we're all excited. Um, wrecking just like yourself when you start that's us too it's like guys <laughs> long to warm up um you know we do something just to get out and then we end up singing Celine Dion before we start the show <laughs> get our nerves, nerves yeah. and but um yeah I love that. Um, huge huge uh shout out uh we want to give our flowers to the you know, Pacific uh, Morning Show, uh, and just the, the podcast, again, the content that the hosts are putting out through Blue Wave TV. Um, I mean, I know, I'm just going to keep saying it's such important uh, advocacy work, uh, important conversations that need to be had, mm -hmm. um, and even just to plant a seed in, in someone that's engaging, that's... Yeah. You know, when you can plant those seeds, uh, the ideas and thoughts at the grassroots level and mm. work up, I mean, that is very powerful. Um, you know, I, was, I wanted to ask you about um, living in the diaspora, um, this idea of us and them. You know, when we think about our identity uh, being born in, well, growing up in New Zealand, uh, this idea of not being Samoan enough, uh, what are your experiences or thoughts on on that discussion? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a huge one. <laughs> well, can I ask you a question? Mm. If, okay, what, what would your, could I ask that question back to you? Um, for me, okay, so I want to, I want to just reference well, everyone's been talking about recently uh, the the dialogue and conversation going on around Jerome and his speech that's been happening on social media and this idea of not being Samoan enough. But for me as an educator, I get that argument. Uh, but what I don't understand is why no one's talking about his use of the n-word and i think that's because i'm a social justice teacher it's the educator in me i'm not saying that that takes away from the importance of your identity and really trying to find where you belong but i don't understand that like i'm really confused about how no one's talking about that in terms of living in the diaspora i don't care what anyone says i mean i definitely mute a lot of people uh from the homeland high five because you know and yeah for real yeah. I mean, I, I've, yeah, I mute them because, you know, it's easy for you to say that, but to say that our parents have not sacrificed something that they are in, almost suggesting selfish because they moved away, that's, I don't believe, that's not how the village works. You know, we still have family in the islands. Like, I, I just, I just tune that, that discussion out because, no one's going to take away from, I mean, I'm very, I'm lucky. I'm, I'm really blessed because, you know, my dad's sister taught us a lot of cultural stuff. My dad taught my brothers, you know, oratory, that kind of stuff. So we were always involved in church stuff, like for as long as I can remember. So 
to have that foundation, like it's, I'm very fortunate, and I know not everyone can have that. Um, but I, yeah, I don't know. I just, I, <laughs> I don't get into the whole you're not Samoan enough. I basically just look, well, where am I standing and what am I doing to be better? That probably doesn't yeah. answer your question. No, no, um, no. It, yeah. it definitely did. Like, I was just trying to see, like, where we're going um, with this. So um, I want to say I want to say one more thing, um, especially on Twitter. I I do spend more time on Twitter than Instagram. Instagram, I'm just posting, uploading off. I find that there's always blame on the diaspora. It doesn't matter what it is, you know. Our folks from back home, oh, you know, these comments are very hurtful. You know, we may not respond to the tweets, but some of the comments um, that they make are very hurtful, and it's like. We're not doing anything less having grown up in Australia or America yeah. or New Zealand. Like I see many people trying to figure out who they are. And I just think everyone will do it at their own pace and that's okay. But when there's this constant judgment of us and them, mm. like I'm sorry, but I just, why is there an us and them? Yeah. Like what makes you more Samoan than me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, go ahead, sis. <laughs> it was great today. I agree with you. Do you know what was funny? When Luai's um, speech released, I was like, I thought everyone was going to give lectures on him saying the N-word. Mm. Because that's what we're usually, um, I feel like there has been a lot of people educating others on why we shouldn't use that term. Mm. And the fact that a lot of people didn't bring that up during a time where it was like, you know, it's like he literally did it. It's on camera and it's everywhere. Like mm. we're everyone saying that he shouldn't have used the N word. So I find that interesting as well. Um, Rosa, like mm -hmm. that was interesting for me. Instead, people were talking about, oh, just relax. Yeah. He's a man. <laughs> <laughs> I have a friend like that who needs to be put in check, blah, blah, blah. And um, that was interesting to see as well um, for me personally. Um, and honestly, my thoughts on the whole Luai thingy, I know that he is not culturally, he's not in tune with Samoan culture. Mm. Like, it looked like the dude was just using whatever Samoan word came to his head. And I don't find personally... I don't find anything that's not a sin. Like, you know mm. how like people make it out to be, oh, that's just so bad for not knowing you and not like mm. that's what happens. It's like I'm I will not be the type to jump on that bandwagon and put people down for not knowing their culture. But I I am the type of person who will very much be upset at people who know the culture and are putting others down for not knowing the culture mm. because they're power tripping. They're like using what they have, the knowledge that they've learned to look down on others. And that attitude needs to go. And I think it's such like a huge topic. Like um, I definitely know the Samoan borns, um, you know, there's that beef with the diaspora, but they're not even the diaspora, like mm. the are arguing with the Samoan borns. Or, um, <laughs> we're all like fighting. Just yeah, yeah. And there's like, oh, you're second generation someone born. Oh, I'm first generation. So yeah. hard, you know? It's this it's so complex. And um I feel like there shouldn't be one someone identity. Like our experiences are so fluid and our culture mm. is constantly evolving. Um sorry, not our culture is evolving. Yes, yes, our culture is evolving, but our identities evolve mm. with our experiences. So if you're, you know, someone living in the UK, to identify as a someone living in the UK with the minimum knowledge because your parents haven't taught you or your parents haven't even been past the knowledge themselves, it's okay to say like, you know, I, I, I'm not really well um, jowled with the culture or I don't know mm -hmm. how to speak someone. It's when they start putting each other down is when we have a problem because there's always space to learn. Mm. Um, 
things. It's the ugly preconceived ideas we have about each other. Like uh, the Afagasis, you know, and they're saying, oh, I have it so hard. I'm too, too white to be brown and too brown to be white. But it's like, it's okay to have that experience. And it, it's true. And and then we have the Samoan, um, <laughs> the Samoan um, borns who get sick of the Afakasis complaining about their problems and they're like, oh, that's your guys' problems. <laughs> and um, yeah, and I'm guilty of that, to be honest. So I'm just like, get over it. You can go to a corporate room and you can fool all the Balangis in there while we, mm. people who are, who look more brown, mm. you know, they put up more of a fight and stand up for, for who they are. So it's, um, I think, honestly, it's just the... It's just the negative ideas that we have about each other and our experiences mm. that need to stop. And instead of being so negative and um, a kill buzz to everyone, it's just best to be understanding mm. and be more research um, with someone um, experiences, mm. like understanding the first generations who migrated in this year, understanding the second generations, the third generation Samoans, um, how they engage with culture and being supportive. But, you know, our people, we support as much as we hate. Like, so yeah. it's, like um, it's really easy for us to make comments about each other. Our humor is basically like... Um, straight to the fatu. Like, it stabs you right here and you figure out how you're going to deal. <laughs> exactly. And if it doesn't hurt, it's not... <laughs> exactly exactly and i'm i have nothing against that humor honestly i feel mm. like for personally i know for other people it, would, it can be triggering um for their upbringing but one thing i wanted to say probably to end this off is there is no one someone identity mm. countless of them yeah. so to the whole idea of oh you're not someone enough is because everyone thinks to be Samoan is one way. You have to be this, you have to look like this, sound like this, your actions must dictate a certain, yeah, yeah. for real, absolutely, I agree. But as soon as we start accepting that there is no one Samoan identity, there is one Samoan, like, um, our traditions, there is mm -hmm. a way to do that and um, to, under to put respect on those traditions, but then to say that like there's only one way to be someone is a lie, and mm. it's that we to we need to get rid of. It's a mindset that doesn't help anyone because it's. And then what? What happens if you become that someone that you know the real someone, the real island guy? What happens if you become that? And then what? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now we're gonna clap for you. We're gonna yeah. Clap for you. Like well, you, you can be someone well you can you know um you can do a speech in front of your family you can host the city mm. that's great but then like there's so much work that needs to be mm. done it doesn't require the Samoan identity it actually requires being a good person mm. and that cross multiple cultures and religions and you know good work ethic mm. and things that involve include being a good a good person and some of those things aren't even part of Samoan identity but mm. it's about adapting and finding the different types of ways we can just be better as a people I guess but yeah mm. I agree with you there's a lot of yeah it's very complex and we can go on and on about it and people will disagree and agree and I mean we can go round and round um but a com you know compassion and empathy um kindness you know, mm. that can go a long way. So, you know, you're very busy, um, busy, 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 loads of projects you're working on. How do you look after yourself? Like self-care, what do you do to have you time away from work? Yeah. Um, this will probably, uh, I don't believe in me time. Mm. Um, that's just my own personal thing. Um, but I do believe in uh, habits, like uh, good habits. There's no one thing that I look forward to in the week that'll set my mind straight and mm. to handle what I'm going through. 
but um, it's a, it's the small things for me. It's about waking up, making sure you read a scripture before you go to work, making sure you start your day not scrolling on your phone, um, mm -hmm. instead of turning on a podcast that will help you put your mindset, um, mm -hmm. making sure I stretch in the morning or even do a simple breathing exercise, um, and making sure that I'm doing that every day. So those are the things that get me through every day. If I was to miss like uh, a scripture reading or a positive morning podcast or a breathing I can tell throughout the day or throughout the week, my body will react in a bad way. Like mm. I'll be stressed or I won't be able to handle something or I think negatively. I start thinking negatively. And the only reason why I start thinking negatively is because I'm not preparing my morning straight. So I basically, um, I'm able to handle what I'm going through, um, through good habits um, mm. and trying to get a good uh, diet, like trying to eat more healthy. And I'm not saying like, you know, those avocado, $15 salah <laughs> but, but it means eating in portion, eating in good portion. If you're going to have a pie, you know, just have a pie. Like you don't have to eat till you're full. Mm -hmm. um, making sure you're eating for energy reasons, um, having water instead of having fizzy. It's the small things. Like, and if I know those small things aren't in check, my life's just going to like go, mm -hmm. and that'll, yeah. But um, that's how I've, I've been able to deal prayer and also a really good support system. Mm. Um, I can always go to my parents when I need to talk about problems and they, you know, give, they, they give me their whakuangas and how I should handle it. Um, I have a really good support system at work. Um, my family really understand when I need a day off or I need to um, prioritize something. Um, but it would probably... Um, the main answer to that question, Rosa, would be good habits. Um, mm. Okay. And I'm also, I'm not saying I'm perfect and I read the Bible every right. day, but I try to. And when I slack, I notice it in my energy that mm. it's not, I'm not doing well with my habits. <laughs> it happens, you know, when you're caught up in life. I mean, it happens to the best of us, you know, and so just – even sometimes just learning to get back on track and how you do that is also uh, a learning curve, is also an experience. Um, future aspirations. I, you know, when I think of Hana personal and then career wise, you've mentioned your company uh, working on many, many projects, uh, a lot of exciting things to come from Blue Wave, um, what about personal personal goals? Like, what are you aiming for? Um, personal goals uh, for me personally is just to be have peace of mind. Mm. Um, because of I talk to a lot of people and I listen to a lot of podcasts and I consume a lot of information every day, my mm. mind is constantly overstimulated. So I'm thinking about so many different things. We can do this here. We can present this in this way. And then by the end of the day, it's just hard for me to relax mm. and not think about those things. So um, for personal goals, I'd really like to learn how to relax <laughs> at the end of the day and to have peace of mind, to be content um, with the work that I'm doing and just to understand that things don't happen overnight. It takes, um, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. Um mm. Also, I want to, hopefully when I'm like 32 or 33, I just want to study like mm. I'm interested in um, arts. I love philosophy. I love theology. Um, I want to spend a lot of time studying and traveling and experiencing different countries with my family. So um, I'm married. I have a husband. Um, so I have to juggle my family life as well. And I have a beautiful five-year-old daughter who's going to school next year. And um, really my personal goals is just making sure my family gets to um, live outside of survival mode. And mm. is able, we're able to have wonderful experiences with each other and just have that peace of mind, really. <laughs> so mm. that for, for personal goals and um, growing together as a family and supporting what we want to do. Um, but for career goals, um, I really want to start more shows for Blue TV um, with that purpose of, you know, elevating bus speaker communities. Um, and I also want to create different products that help 
Pacific communities, whether that be through card games, um, through health products or different things like that. And yeah, but um, that that's me. That would be my, my career goals and my personal goals, yeah. Do you have any book recommendations before we wrap up the show? Uh, Atomic Habits so um, mm. by James Clear. I'm not sure if um, someone has already mentioned this. It's a very popular book, um, but it's a really, really, really good, um, really good book. Uh, one of my key takeaways, which I'll, I'll share, is that your habits is part of your identity. So, you know, when we were talking before about the Samoan identity, the Samoan identity, you know, you could be talking, like you could be the greatest orator or you could know how to, you know, gully the saw or do all these different things in Samoan culture. But then when you go home, do your habits reflect that same identity? And um, through this book, this is my own thought, sorry, it's my own theory. Um, I was able to understand that what you do every day actually frames who you are more than what you think you identify with. So if you wake mm. up every day and you're looking after your family, um, those things build up wealth more than culture, more than mm. how you um, relate to to something. And ah, uh, so hard to put it put it away. But what I'm trying to say is, what you do every day speaks more on your identity than it does with how you relate to a wider cultural aspect, if that makes sense. Mm. But um, that's what I really liked about um, Atomic Habits is that um, you're able to ground yourself with yourself. So you're not easily swayed if someone comes up to you and says, hey, you're not true Samoan because you did this, 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 this. But with your habits and who you prioritize in your life, uh, with your family, you are able to be like, no, I look after my family. Those are Samoan values, putting your family first. Um, no, I... You know, I work at, in health or in education as a teacher in Pacific communities. 40 hours of, of my time is dedicated to serving our people. I am as Samoan as it gets. Mm -hmm. and, and you could be someone who doesn't speak the language, but that is so part of our identity is, you know, helping, tautua, service. And I think that stuff goes underrated because everyone mm. just got a malu or they've got a, um, you know, they've got uh, all these ta cultural tattoos that, um, represent Samoa, but do your actions and how you live your life represent your identity is the most important thing. And I think that book gives really good practical steps in learning how to build a solid identity um, using everything that you uh, relate to or you feel is important in your life. Sorry, I feel like I've been talking too much. <laughs> no, I, um, you know, as we start to wrap up the show, I really just wanted to say thank you, Hannah. Um, I haven't said a lot. I've really just been listening, being an active listener, uh, taking it in. Uh, there's just so many gems and takeaways from this Talanoa. Mm. Uh, to you, you're just kind of talking and sharing, but I believe that for those who tune in to listen, for those who watch on YouTube, even for myself, it's so inspirational to see and hear uh, the action that your company is doing out in the community, those routines, uh, those processes being set up, those mistakes that you learn from a project that doesn't work, all of that is part of the journey. Um, and I'm just, I'm feeling overwhelmed, but very inspired uh, by, by what you've shared today. It's such an honor to have you on the show. As I said in the beginning, oh, fangirl, <laughs> fangirl hard. You know, I love seeing what your company uh, is doing out there. And I just want to say, keep going, keep building, uh, you know, keep persevering, um, keep uplifting, keep challenging, you know, keep engaging and connecting with, Pacifica folks, uh, you know, hopefully there are other companies who are working alongside with your own and, you know, doing the same thing or helping to uplift, you know, different community groups. I hope that's the case. But for me, I'm really looking forward to 2023 and just seeing 
what else your company has in store for us, what else your team, amazing, amazing team. Uh, it's not easy. Uh, you've alluded to it right throughout the Talanoa. It is not easy to challenge societal norms and you know it's okay that's that's just part of life if we don't challenge it then we're always going to be listening to the dc person who is sitting at the table mm. so i yeah i just want to wish you and your family a wonderful festive christmas uh, stay safe out there uh, enjoy hope you can have some downtime with your husband and daughter and just um yeah, bring on 2023. I'll I'll hand it to you just to kind of wrap us up. And I know you've I'm putting more pressure because you've already shared like a gazillion gems. I'm like, I know you've got more in there. I know you got more in there, sis. Hit me, yeah. hit me. So uh, I'll hand it over to you to wrap it up, sis. Uh, thank you so much, Rosa. Um, first of all, thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm so honored to be on your podcast. I love the work what you um I love the work that you I love your introduction song. Um, it's awesome. And I can really see your vision and um, the mission that you're on to help our bus speaker communities by providing this content. You don't understand the amount of work you're doing and um, the people who can tune into this and can find this type of media so that they can, you know, better be productive people in their lives and to be better people. So I'm really thankful and honored. Thank you so much. I'm a fangirl of you. I always see <laughs> and I'm constantly recruiting and I just hope that um you, you know we had a conversation earlier and you said that this is a hobby for you this is something that you love to do that's the kind of people we need to do this stuff uh people who love and understand that this is um in our own way our our very own way of preaching but we, we don't want to be too preachy we mm. we want um useful information and practical steps um, and to how people could um, better their lives. So thank you so much, Rosa. I really appreciate the hard work that you're doing. And uh, I can't wait to watch more episodes uh, from your podcast. And please don't stop. Please don't stop. <laughs>